Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you like the content, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, and turning on the notification bell, as well as commenting below. Now today, I'm going to get into a few topics, but I want to lead off with tuning into what's going on with the United States Congress. I'm first going to talk about what the United States Congress is. Now, this is a governing body from the United States. They have 435 members. Those 435 members are representatives of any given state within the Union. California, Texas, New York, all have representatives, all have delegates. Now, the only state in the Union that do not have that representation is Washington, D.C., where our capital is. Now, what I'm about to say about Congress, that could be a grain of salt because people in D.C. tend to think that it's a bad thing not having representation, but we have representation and I'm not too keen on them. I'm not too fond on them. So that's why I'm here to unpack all of this crazy stuff because out of the 435 members, the one person who leads the Congress, the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, it blows me out the water when I learned her net worth. I learned her net worth was to the tune of $115 million. Now, the average salary of a Congress person does not yield that type of income. They could be in office for 50, 40, 100 years and they'll never year they'll never, I'm sorry, yield that amount of income. It's just impossible. The math just will not math. If you add up their salary over the course of let's say uh, a house representative, they'll stay in term what how many, how long do them folks go? I think they go about eight year terms. Or is that the Senate? Yeah, they go eight year terms. So in eight year terms, you calculate their salary times eight. Yo, the math not mathing. It just does not make sense to me. So I asked myself the question, how does Congress make all of this money? If Nancy Pelosi can yield profits to the tune of 115 million dollars is something that i need to learn it's something that i need to know i need to figure this out what the hell does she do how does she do it she's an 80 year old woman today how does she do it she's only been house speaker since two, about 2018 2018 to hear what she just quit and December, she announced it, December 2022, right after they, ironically enough, raised the debt ceiling again. Like, seriously? You just added a, how much money to the bill, and then you dip out? But that's neither here nor there. But this woman, $115 million, blew me out the water. Now, the average congressman or woman's salary is to the tune of 174. 174 is the exact figures for a senator or a house representative. That's their top cap salary as of 2022. Now, in her special case, she's the majority leader. She's the house leader. So her salary is capped out at about 193. With inflation, I would say 224 maybe. You could add that up over a course of eight years and you will not, cannot make $115 million. It's virtually impossible. So I asked myself, how did Ms. Pelosi make this money? I'm very, very curious. So I did what I do <laughs> and I went to digging. Come to find out, her husband, she has a husband. Her husband's name is Paul. Paul and Nancy Pelosi. So, he has a VC firm, a venture capital firm. Now, these are 
groups of investors that go around and they put their money into things and then they get these crazy returns on things. So she has been putting her salary along with his money into investments. Investments, maybe through a corporation, through a fund, a trust fund, a family fund, holding companies. Oh, they have all kinds of ways of making money. But in this particular case, her husband has a venture capital firm. That, that yields some special kind of money because you, like I said, you have a group of investors that come together and make these deals happen. So when you put, lump all of that together, she's able to, with compounded interest over, we're not even, we're, we're going way back before her speakership in 2018. She's been in government for quite some time. She come from a family of, you know, government officials, her dad and all the rest of these folks, right? San Francisco girl, Nancy is. She's raked in $115 million on a government salary. Blew me out the water. Speaking engagements, you name it, these folks do that. But what they're supposed to be doing is representing those in their congressional districts. The people that they are paid that 174, 193 to represent. But nonetheless they keep throwing us in a hole so the u.s policies <laughs> i mean it's amazing to me how they vote on these bills that's their job but these bills are the same thing that governs their corporations and their trust funds and their companies and so they're able to make something to the tune of 115 million dollars that cannot be understated blew me out the water now I also want to get into who pays the United States Senator salary because this is a special different group of a different sector of the government and this is the United States Treasury. The United States Treasury, we all are familiar with them because they come knocking every year to collect our taxes. And depending on where you're at on the, on the chart, you either going to get a return or you owe them money. Or in special cases, you break even, right? The United States Treasury owes the Federal Reserve, our central bank, trillions of dollars. We're talking the United States government is in debt. $31 trillion. $31 trillion. And they don't pay the entire principal back to the Federal Reserve. They only pay the interest. Every year they pay just the interest, which means they keep kicking a can down the road. And these special groups of congressmen and women, they keep voting to raise the debt ceiling. The United States have a debt ceiling. The amount of money that they cannot, owe, they cannot go over that amount of money. If they go over that amount of money, they cannot fund, they cannot pay their bills, which causes the, it could potentially be a government shutdown. Which means no public services running, no state parks, no government buildings, everybody furloughed, everybody goes home. That's what that means. And it in U.S. history, it's been about, what, 78 times? This makes the 79th time. They just went in December, what, 22nd, 2022? And added another $1.7 trillion. The last I looked at the numbers, it was 28 trillion was the cap. We somehow got our debt running up to 31. We blew past that ceiling. It, it was capped at 28. How we get to 31? We crept up to 31. Then, just this past December 2022, before Nancy get her tail out of office and decide she don't want to be around no more, after you just charged a another 1.7 trillion dollars to the damn deficit 
Now you want to dip out? Now you want to go home and retire with your $115 million? Are you serious? Meanwhile, how the United States Treasury collect their money is through taxation, like I said. They come annually, skip those payments, and that's a problem for you, right? It's a problem for us selling United States Treasuries, United States bonds. They sell those to commercial businesses small businesses large businesses corporations citizens and other countries countries like japan who to the tune of like almost a trillion dollars in u.s treasuries china oh near they have nearly a trillion dollars in u.s treasuries all types of company countries and companies they buy into U.S. Treasuries, U.S. bonds. So that's another way that the United States government, the Treasury, makes money to pay the government bills. They collect all of that because everybody see that as a safe bet. We're the world reserve currency. They see it as a sure bet. And then the other little trick they have is selling Treasury notes, what we know as cash, to commercial banks. And this is how this goes. I'll give you an example. It costs three cents to generate whatever denomination of bills you want to name. One, rarely two dollar bills, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds. Take whatever denomination you want. It costs three cents to make that. To crank up the printers, load up the ink, load in the paper, and print that that one bill. It costs three cents now they go sell it to the commercial bank for its face value a dollar that means the united states treasury collects 97 cent profit on every note that they sell to the commercial banks if it's ten dollars they get what nine dollars and 97 cents profit it's a hunt and you go up the denomination and this is how the United States Treasury also collect money. And then the banks get the money and do what they do with it. And they charge us interest on it and get their money back. And then all of that money somehow enters the stock market. The stock market rallies. Fake economy, everybody wealth effect, everybody's rich, right? Or at least that's what Instagram say, but everybody rich. Everybody feeling like they got it. Everybody, but that's how they, they stimulate the economy. They put that money out there. And they give the banks the money through this little method called quantitative easing, QE. First time used in 2008. That was originated in Japan. When they were facing their crisis, Bush Bush Jr. said, okay, let's use this. The economy blew up, the housing market crashing, the banks failing. We need to stimulate the economy. Boom, here's a bill. Congress, pass this. Get this to me. Congress, drop the bill, write the bill up. Boom, they, they vote on it. Boom, they send it to the Senate. The Senate vote on it. Boom, send it to the president. President's desk, he get his pen out, he signing it. We all see that part. Well, we, for those of us who pay attention, we see the behind the scenes. Well, what they doing up to that point? But the big reveal be, oh, the president's in here signing the bill, cause these jerks passed it. Now, the Federal Reserve and the United States government, those are two totally different entities. People get that mixed up. The Fed is not government. The Fed is a private entity governed by nine people nine of the top of the riches of the richest one percent are those nine people who run the federal reserve who makes the call who who basically when the bills are passed they send it to the president the president then sends it to the central bank the central bank and the nine governing bodies they agree okay boom they draw up the order they then send that order over to the to the United States Treasury. The Treasury then crank up the printing machine and get it going. 
get it going. They have the um the what minting and engraving department there as well where they make the coins and engrave the coins but they biggest concern be cranking out them them bank notes them re treasury notes get them out get them out and that's how they stimulate the economy meanwhile printing the fake money to buy real assets right screwing up the economy and that's where the wealth effect come in at everybody feeling rich everybody because they pushing money out there houses cars everything at inflated prices the rich get richer right because they the ones own the majority of the assets and then you had a retail investor come in unassuming don't know much the whole joint about the crash but they get out before everything crash <laughs> so that's how it directly affects your household when the federal reason when things crash of course that's the that's that's the oh that's the sad part but the federal reserve be behind the scenes playing with the interest rates jacking up your interest rates on your home you can't afford your mortgage no more jacking up the price on your car you can't afford the car no more any assets that's attached to interest rates credit cards all that stuff when they raise the interest rates so too does those it's no way it's the only way they can fight inflation it's the only way they can stop this this run up of just assets just going to the moon. At some point, it has to crash. The bubble has to pop. It's inevitable. And everything is done on debt. Kick down to the next generation. And then you have student loan debt. Since we're talking about debt and affecting direct households, you got student loan debts affecting whole generations. People don't want to have kids. People can't mortgage out homes because of debt to income ratio. If you have too much debt and you don't have enough income to support that debt, you're not going to get approved for a mortgage if you have an existing crazy amount on your student loan still remaining. And for everybody knows, interest is interest. You gonna pay if you pay on any debt with interest, the whatever institution gonna get their interest first. And then you could be paying on that joint for 10 years and still don't even, you barely scrape your principal. Just getting frustrated, feeling like you're on a loop. Like, wait a minute, I've been, and I know they have to get their money first. Interest, that's their money. Most of this stuff is subsidized by the government anyway. Yeah, so it's like, wow. But, Joe Biden come in and say, forgive student loan debt to the tune of people here. They, they get the, they, they're misled by thinking that student loan debt forgiveness is wiping out their debt completely. No, it's not. It's only a $10,000 forgiveness. You have what? We have $1.7 trillion worth of student debt now. And that's divided among 43 million Americans. 43 million dollars. 43 million Americans hold 1.7 trillion dollars worth of debt. That's a bubble in itself. And people default like crazy. Which is why they're asking for the student loan forgiveness. These kids are so unassuming. They going in there. We went in there. I did it. Went in there at 17 signing a student loan. Don't know what's going on. All you know is you want to go to college. Society says go to college. We here. We don't know how we going to fund this. You run in there. You fund student loan. It's your only option. So you like, okay, boom. You get it. But when you graduate, you got six months. Uh, you literally have a six-month grace period. They say within six months, find a job. You better find a career you love because in six months, you got to start servicing that debt, student loan debt, them billing statements coming in. They give you six months post-college. The minute you throw up that tassel and graduate, throw up that hat, get that certificate, your six-month clock start running. And that affects everything. And they think that it's some magic pen well, you can just go in there and erase $1.7 trillion. It don't work like that. It does not work like that. 
that 1.7 trillion is going to get transferred over to the next generation our children and grandchildren are going to be paying that instead they're not going to be paying a ten thousand dollars they're going to be paying twenty thousand with inflation thirty thousand who knows where it's going to run up to but you can't just erase that debt you can't just say oh well i'm gonna forgive this it's not that easy it is not which is why they're now kicking it to the supreme court they need to let the supreme court decide on whether they can erase 1.7 trillion dollars and how that's going to affect other programs and other services we pay eight what 800 and something the high 800 and something billion dollars for defense alone every year just defense protecting the world uh domestic safety security yes nearly a trillion dollars every year it's been like that since 2001 it's been that way a trillion dollars since 2001 you do the math and then ask me how we got to that 31 trillion dollar deficit very easy all these beautiful helicopters air flight carriers all this stuff yeah that stuff costs protecting the world protecting the oceans protecting global trade protecting all of that stuff it matters yes it matters it matters a lot and since we're the world reserve currency we're the superpower we're the global nation the soviet union not here no more they they fell and collapsed in 91 that left the united states by themselves because you had the cold war between the united states and soviet union who has to be the better who has to this whole race that's why we are student debt today because the president then said oh we on a space race with the soviet union we competing with this other country yeah this big old nation we fighting for for the superpower yeah uh-huh we fight for that and we need to be the smartest nation we need to be the, have the most astronauts we need to get the space here we need to get to the moon first we need to get to this first and we yeah competing and now we 1.7 it worked very well because it ushered a lot of people they lowered the threshold as far as um entry entry into college because back in the day it used to be way harder to get in college now it's like they to usher in a whole new generation of unassuming kids who don't know nothing about finances nothing about debt but they signed the biggest contract of their life or at least one of the biggest contracts next to mortgage yeah it's pretty high up there on the list student loan debt but they can't just erase it it does not go away it does not go away it's a long road to recovery it's so many cracks in this system i could keep going on forever no one person has the magic bullet no one person knows how to just solve it all and it's not one bullet for all problems like i said it's so many different bubbles you got mortgage bubbles credit card bubbles stock market bubbles uh what car loans did i say car loans all those are separate bubbles separate bubbles and if any one of them pop it triggers chaos and chaos for us here since we're the world reserve currency our money rules the world basically the petrol dollar yo the whole world gonna be affected all central banks across the world not just our federal reserve jerome powell ain't gonna be the only one juggling balls it's gonna be every central bank across the world the bank of russia the bank of china the bank of england the european central bank none of them all of them it will be a domino effect and that would be bad you think globalization and trade is already on razor thin edge and about to blow up and implode it's already imploding before our eyes trade wars between china and the u.s they're the two biggest trading partners that's that's all the way left how many companies been pulled out of china 
the U.S. banning chip making over there, told all of their engineers and software developers, all this stuff, either you're going to stay in China and face lose your citizenship in the United States, or you're going to bring your tail back home and continue your work over here. They said, China, we out. You have to understand what semiconductor chips do for the world. That operates our computers, cars, cell phones, you name it. Le technology we ain't even thought of yet because the chips keep getting smarter and taiwan has the recipe and that 890 something billion dollars worth of defense funds we pay for every year yeah taiwan included ukraine included uh, anything that pops off in the globe we're included because the United States is the only sole superpower. You got China a close second, but the other than that, the United States is kind of sitting at the top by themselves, by ourselves rather. So it's like, yo, we'll somehow get it together. Like I said, no one knows, but for sure, for sure, 2023 is going to be a reset, a wealth transfer all kinds of stuff you got baby boomers about to retire just like they boomed with birth they gonna boom with retire and they gonna boom with death it's it's a cycle of life but they were the biggest generation in the world my parents well when they came back from war they boom and now we hear it we're in the bubble we're in the bubble and the way the feds and Congress loses race against inflation and the economic crash, the United States government defaults. Its inability to convert its treasuries that I talked about earlier into cash when people come knocking at the door. People meaning citizens, regular households, corporations, companies, other governments, whole countries, like I said, Japan, China, all have bonds that they will want to get cashed out and if the government can't can meet them bond obligations that's the trigger for there's nothing the federal reserve central bank can do jerome powell can juggle as many balls as he wants to it's over it's done all they can do is stand by and watch the crash and then that crash is going to be everybody at home that were caught like deers in the headlights and they're gonna see it all fold, unfold on the tv at home meanwhile folks like myself been like man we've been watching this for a couple years now for for a little minute for a couple decades for at least a decade and a half at least for me i've been having my issues with politicians i think it's about damn time i started this channel and i'm happy i did it and I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep doing my thing. Because if this, if the feds lose this battle with inflation, all of the high costs and high things that we have to pay for now because of their mistakes, oh yeah, it's going to get uglier. And I don't care how rich or how poor you are. you poor, you're going to get poor. If you're rich, you can... Wave your money in the air all you want to. I'm worth $10 million. Yeah, but if the, if the stock market crash and assets crash and everything else crash, that $10 million is no longer going to be $10 million. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. If the market drops 50%, guess what? Your net worth drop. The dollar drops 50%. And people lose faith in the dollar across the world. It's no longer the world reserve currency. We have a problem. I don't care. Rich pork. The money is now rendered worthless. And that's what the Fed is trying to stop. But they've been quantitative easing since 2008. And they, since then, they like, okay, we're going to use this as a one time. Bush promised us one time. But that one time, and they've never been able to stop it. It's been running ever since 2008. And the economists being been behind the scenes like, look, we're about to, it's getting crazy. We can't keep printing money. We can't keep stimulating. And the only difference between 2008 recession and what's about the, and what happened in 2020, when the world shut down in 2020, in 2008, 
the bailout, the quantitative easing, the, the stimulus money went directly to businesses. They bailed out Wall Street. That's when you had Occupy Wall Street, all these protests across America. Like, how dare you bail out the businesses? The banks, they caused all this. How do you bail them out? And not us. And we pay the taxes. All of that stuff I just listed. Yeah, we pay that. So why can't we get the money? The feds and Congress and the United States Treasury said, no, you guys not getting it. We're going to give it to the businesses so they can go buy back shares, buy bigger companies, merge their companies with failing companies and become bigger. It's a whole game. But this time in 2020, when the world shut down, they learned a lesson from Occupy Wall Street and the world about to burn. You think what happened, what, January 6th or whatever Congress been hollering about when they ran down on the Capitol and they basically trashed the House of Representatives? <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen times. Yeah, it's, it's it'll get crazy. It'll get crazy. And they're trying to stop it. But, oh, it's a delicate fight between the Fed, the Federal Reserve, Central Bank, and inflation. The question is, who going to win? And all our livelihoods depend on it. Because if the Fed lose, we all lose. Everything's crashing. Everything. Price is going to be through the roof. And the money going to be rendered worthless. That's a cold situation to be in. So, I'm hoping the Fed, I don't want the Fed to lose, but it's already an inflated bubble. It has to pop. The only way to reset is for it to pop. Because everything's done on debt, leverage, everybody, credit cards, everything. Everything's done on debt. Everything, including our government. So, hopefully we can hit the reset button sooner rather than later because they keep kicking the can down the road. So, I'm hoping. I have my fingers crossed, but I can't help but to think, why would I put my faith in the same people who put us in this situation? They the ones who legislated this stuff into law. They allowed the banks to do all of this stuff. They allowed the banks to create digital money out of nowhere and inflate the market. They allowed these companies to buy back stocks and inflate their companies. Now owning greater market shares in whatever industry their their corporation is in. How unfair is that? Rich get richer, right? But only the rich understand that this is the time. It's bad for a lot of people, but this is the time when a lot of people who know what they're doing actually get rich. They move themselves from the middle class down to the upper class. And all you have to do is sit down and pay attention and, and watch how finances work. Most people don't understand it, don't care to understand it, but neither here nor there hopefully folks like myself will help people understand how all of this stuff funnels through the system and why most of us you know either are have been or in a debt loop everybody the statistics are there men lie instagram lie women lie men lie numbers do not lie and i'm looking at some crazy numbers on some 50 58% of Americans are in debt. Some form of debt. Credit card, car loan, student loan, mortgage, payday loan. They in some form, form of debt, including our government. So you tell me that's not going to at some point implode. It has to. It's no way it's not. Physics, tell it, it's just it's crazy so it's amazing to me how you know i mean me trying to find out nancy's net worth and stuff that just lends to the fact of what i already knew 
like how rich these people really are you think oh they're on this average salary no it doesn't work like that that's why they want those jobs it come with prestige and they have a lot of perks that go along with it including up to like 300 what 239 days off a year because you have to remember these congressmen and women they don't live in washington dc they get to what they live in their respective states and cities where their constituents are where their districts are they fly into dc for votes in the house of representative important votes like raising the debt ceiling like i talked about them just adding uh, another 1.7 trillion dollars to the deficit what that 1.7 is about to be spent on and it's amazing to me how they rec they legislate a bill for 1.7 trillion to fund the government from December to next September, September 2023. So the government will be funded with this bill that they just signed until September 2023. September 2023, they're going to have to come back to the freaking table again. And keep coming back to the table. In United States history, United States Congress has voted 73, 78 times to raise the debt ceiling. That means the government, the United States Treasury, cannot pay the United States bills. 78, 79 different times they have to come to that. And if we talking every year... That's been the past 79 years that they raised the debt ceiling. Oh, we can't go over this amount, but we're going to go over this amount. We, can, we, we have to, or we're not going to be able to pay our bills. That means you jerks mismanaged money. All the tax money y'all got in through the United States Treasury. Y'all just, y'all blew it all. Blew it all. And now y'all have to come back and say, oh, well, we need some more. And here we go, 1.7 trillion. Like I said, draft up that bill, get it to the president's desk. Boom. President, get it to the central bank, the Federal Reserve, the Fed. Boom. They get the order drafted. Boom. Send it to the United States Treasury. United States Treasury crank it out. They get it to the commercial banks. The commercial banks get it out to the people. And the money gets introduced to the system. And when that 1.7 is introduced into the system, it creates inflation. They cannot keep doing that. Every time they print, it gets worse. And they're going to keep printing and keep having to come back to the table every September of every year and vote on the same thing. Raise the debt ceiling. And oh, they vote unanimously. There's never that one jerk like, nah, I ain't voting to raise the debt. I'm going to let it all crash like it's crazy but these are the people we put our trust in we we hope they're gonna do the right things because they have the the pins and the influence and the power to navigate how our households are ran from thousands of miles away with the stroke of a pen that's the power that these people have and like i said they raise the interest rate your mortgage go up and people that had adjustable rate mortgages or have adjustable rate mortgages and let's say they got a five-year term and they took it out in 2018 when Nancy Pelosi took office well that five-year term is coming up and they rate gonna get adjusted and it's gonna get adjusted to the higher interest rate that Jer Jerome Powell keeps jacking up in the Federal Reserve Playing with the interest rates, trying to slow down the economy. It's too much money out there. They got to pull it back. 2020, they put too much money out there. Everybody got money. Everybody got a check. You got a check. You get a check. You get a car. You get a check. Yeah. And now we feel in the effects of it. Nobody liked the effects of it, but that's what happens when they print money. When the United States Treasury printed up all them checks and sent them out to all of us. Yeah. Uh-huh. That comes at a price. And now the things are going up and up and up. And now the things are about to go down, down, down. It's like, yeah, this is the effect of it.
like I said, no one knows what to do, how to do it. Everybody stand up there on the podium and pretend like they got the answer. When meanwhile, they don't. They don't. They meet. At, constitutionally, they're only obligated to meet once a year. I don't think they get much done. So, yeah, hopefully they get it together. I'm rooting for them because, like I said, that battle with inflation, if the Fed lose inflation, lose to inflation, it's over for a lot of people. And like I said, including people, especially people who own assets. Everything's falling to the floor. Everything. Everything. So, I think I've talked enough. I'm going to close this one out because I could go on forever about these jerks. I can talk forever about these people. They put us in this situation and I'm not, I'm, I'm hoping, but dang, if we got to rely on the same people to get us out of it, what side of the coin you on with that how you think they gonna fare with it but i'm like i said i'm trying to be optimistic and root for them but yo it's crazy and a lot of people are not paying attention a lot of people are not paying attention for the people who are paying attention like the nancy pelosi's yeah that heifer and got her 115 million dollars now she done quit the house speakership now she about to go home and retire and sit back with the rest of us and watch all this stuff implode when she should be standing there being held accountable for all of the yeah all of the debt that her and her leadership has put on to that 30 31 trillion dollar deficit that keeps running up you look at that clock it'll make you sick at least it, it nauseates the heck out of me to see 31 trillion dollars a lot of people never even say the word trillion let alone see it generated like what ain't nowhere is going like once you pay attention to it it's kind of hard to close your eyes to it and you see what they up to and you see what they doing but i'm a root for them for the sake of all of us Hope they get it together. I hope Jerome Powell wins the battle with inflation. I hope the United States Congress get a reset. They get a new speaker. Probably Kevin McCarthy. Who knows? He's the lead in the, in the position right now. So who knows? Who knows how that's going to go? But, you know, nonetheless, the Republicans got the House back. And... <laughs> It's gonna be. It's gonna make for a very interesting 2023. Let's say that, and I'll be here to talk about it all. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in. Please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video if possible. I'll try to be back um, as often as possible. I'm gonna try to get into really, really, really liking this. So I hope you guys go along the journey with me. So until next time, goodbye.